What's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome to a pseudo road reflection. Uh, I, I was gonna try to do this um, in my car after after my last tour date, but uh, I had some technical difficulties. Uh, I had to get a new car mount, um, so that has arrived. It has not been installed, but. Uh, I am officially uh, done with all my shows for 2019, so um, I wanted to do kind of like a year in review of touring, um, talk about some of my favorite venues, talk about some of my favorite shows, uh, because there have been uh, a lot of them this year, and I tried to do this last year, and I think I did it in, in parts, and it was kind of... Uh, uh, I didn't do it at the right time, um, uh, that the sun was setting and things of that sort, uh, but I, I really enjoyed doing it last year. It seemed like uh, some some people also enjoyed doing it last year, uh, that the caught the show last year. So I'm going to kind of break this up into two parts. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I have uh, my notes here, and uh, people that get worried that I kind of glance at my notes while I'm driving will not have to worry about that this time. Uh, because I have my notes here and I am clearly not driving, so you guys should be fine. But I will be doing, I have, um, let's see, about 30 different venues, um, and, uh, 30 different types of gigs that I would like to talk about. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it in two parts. I'm going to get to the, uh, first 15, uh, in this part and then get to the second part, uh, with the second 15 and, uh, and, and basically do a two part year in review of touring. Um, but, uh, the reason I want to do this, the reason I try to do these is because, um, you know, I think people get bogged down in the negatives of a lot of things and touring is really hard, right? I, I think touring is one of the hardest things that you can do. Um, and, uh, there's a lot of challenges. It can be very grueling. It can be very lonely to be on the road by yourself all the time. So, uh, I wanted to do this as a way to let people know that there's also really good parts to touring, really uh, fun parts to touring as well. Uh, the people that you meet, the venues that you play. And um, f personally for me, I like playing the smaller venues. I like playing the more intimate spaces um, at, with the type of comedy I do, where I talk about a lot of issues, tell a lot of stories, um, uh, to talk about philosophy and ideas and, uh, and thoughts and that sort of stuff. Um, I think that doing smaller intimate venues is the right thing, uh, for, for that type of comedy. And my goal in comedy has really never been to be on television or, uh, sell out arenas or stadiums or anything of that sort. It is, uh, more been to, uh, get 30 or 30 to 50 people consistently in every city that I perform in. That's really it. That's, that's, that's my goal. Um, and I don't think that's a small goal, uh, but I do think that it's an achievable goal. And in certain cities, uh, I did hit that, uh, and I think this year might be the the first year that I hit that consistently in a in a, a, a variety of different cities, um, and I feel pretty good about that. That's pretty that's pretty fucking cool for me. That's that's a a goal uh, or getting closer to that goal. Um, so I uh, I wanted to kind of do this as a way to not just remind myself um uh, of the fun shows that I've played this year and take a retrospective and you know remember that it, it there, there were some challenges there were some tough times but there were a lot of positive aspects to this year as well um so I hope that that kind of comes through that's uh it, it's a little bit for me and to hopefully a little bit for you guys there are going to be a ton of shout outs in this video guys uh so um sorry for all the gushing and the and the shout outs uh, like I said, I played some pretty fucking awesome shows this year that I am very, very thankful for, uh, and I got to, um, meet and perform with some pretty incredible folks as well. So, uh, let's get into it. Let's start with the top of the year. Um, the first venue that I performed at this in, in 2019 was actually a venue called Church of Satire Comedy Club. This is a brand new comedy club in Hanover, PA, which is close to Gettysburg and Harrisburg. Um, and, uh, I fucking love this room. I love it. It's such a great space. It's such a wonderful room. 
Um, Jim Bryan runs a, a fantastic show. So I met Jim uh, when I went to an open mic at Hambones. Um, I don't get the opportunity to go to open mics as much anymore because I'm on the road all the time. Uh, so when I come home, I kind of just want to chill out, relax, you know, kind of take care of, of me. So I don't particularly get to go to open mics as much as I used to uh, in, in my earlier days. I used to go to like nine a week or something like that um, and constantly drilling material. Uh, but, you know, I think it's, it is an invaluable resource. Uh, if you're a younger comic, if you're a younger musician, I highly recommend going to an open mic, going and checking it out. It's good for, uh, it's great practice. You get to flesh out your material and it's great to network and meet people and collaborate with people as well. Um, but, uh, I, you know, uh, now, and, and the form of comedy I'm doing now too, is it's hard to kind of package it in, in, um, three to five minutes. Uh, and some of the open mics I go to are music open mics where I do get 10 minutes to do it. But, uh, when, the idea I'm working on is correlated with the with like 30 other minutes that come before it. Um, it can become difficult to to kind of work on that. So uh, I, I end up trying to work on the whole show uh, holistically. Um, and, and what was cool about Jim was uh, Jim and his uh, his business partner, Pat Conroy, they saw my material and, and were very excited about it and talked to me about getting me out to Hanover and uh, we, we tried to do that, the, um, uh, in 2018 and unfortunately it was, uh, it was, a, uh, I think one of the first warm days, uh, or one of the last warm days of the spring, uh, and, uh, people just kind of wanted to be outdoors and we didn't have a, a, a big turnout. We had a handful of people. I think we wound up with about, uh, four or five people that showed up, uh, cause they used to run their shows out of a vape shop and uh, uh which you know very cool intimate setting and um i came uh, and we we did a little short intimate show and uh D jim was very kind and and kind of took care of uh myself and vincent didiana who went and did that show um they were very cool about chatting with us very cool about being upfront and honest with us about like you know not why the show wasn't good it didn't didn't come through and and we did push it out and you know they had never done a ticketed show before and maybe that veered people away uh but he had mentioned to me that things were on the horizon um which was which was kind of cool and then i found out he was opening this club uh and uh and i think they opened in december of 2018. pardon the fiji um but yeah, uh, I, I went and I did it at the first week of January. It was the first show of 2019. Um, Vincent Tidiano came with me. He opened the show. Uh, Vincent, you might know from the P.O. Vincent podcast, uh, which I have frequented quite a bit. Um, and it's always a fun time uh, when me and Vincent get to, to nerd out and yell about comic books. Uh, but uh, so we, we, we went and we, we did the show. And uh, it's a super fucking fun room. It really is. They're, they were a really fun crowd. Uh, we had some Harrisburg people drive in um, and hang out with us for the first show. And initially, they were doing four shows a, a weekend. Um, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. And I think um, I think that's... Eventually, I think they'll be able to sustain that model. But Jim, was, Jim quickly kind of, I think, realized that it might not be the... Uh, the best way to approach a comedy club. Um, so he, uh, he just switched it to one show Friday, one show Saturday. Uh, so when I did in January, I did two shows in one night, which, um, is okay. I, it's not my favorite thing to do, to be honest. Uh, because what I like to do is, uh, do the show and then hang out with people afterwards, um, and chat with them, um, you know, like if there is some sort of community active act, activist based type stuff that people that come to the shows, I, I like to engage with them and, um, learn from them and things of that sort. So when you do two shows in one night, sometimes you don't get the opportunity to do that. You don't get the opportunity to hang out with folks. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, 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 those two shows were really fun though. <laughs> the second show we had a weird situation. I think somebody, uh, was a little too drunk and, um, and they were, they were very kind and they were very nice in the beginning of the show. And then they kind of started to get more and more obnoxious as the, as the evening proceeded. 
and J- you know Jim and Jim and Pat kind of got them out. And basically, one of the drunk guys was like, "I can do this better than the people that have been on stage. I'm funnier than them," kind of thing. And and Jim was basically like, "Okay, you need to go down to Baltimore. It's about an hour and a half away from here, and you need to go to those open mics." And he's like, "I'm from Baltimore." Blah 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 blah. And Jim was like, great, I know a bunch of the comics from Baltimore. Uh, if they vouch for you, uh, then, you know, we can, uh, I'll, I'll give you a five-minute guest spot on one of these shows. Uh, and so that, which was kind of cool, right? Is like, it's cool to see, like, club owners and venue, uh, venue owners that, that care about what's on stage and not just about selling their drinks and stuff like that. Um, because then it's then it's more about the art. It's more about what's being put on stage. Uh, and then I, I met uh, Craig there as well. Craig and I ended up talking for a long time after both those shows. Uh, and uh, Craig, what was cool is the, the backdrop of the Church of Satire is um, like all of these things that they have gathered over the course of, you know, the five or six years that they've been putting together shows in the Hanover area, uh, Hanover Gettysburg area. And they made this like amazing backdrop out of it with the Church of Satire logo, um, and it's it's just the fucking coolest backdrop. It is the coolest backdrop. It is the most DIY space you'll ever see, right? Like, and and the backdrop is kind of kind of encapsulates that aesthetic of it. Uh, and I comment about it every, like both times that I've been there. Uh, because I'm just, I love it. It's just so fucking cool. And, and Craig, Craig put that together. And he also does their posters and he also, um, he's also starting to perform stand up now, which is really cool. Um, so when I, when I went back there, I went back there. Uh, so I did empathy on sale, uh, in January. And then I went back to perform, uh, politely angry, uh, at, um, at church of satire in October. Uh, and that was my birthday weekend. So I got to spend my birthday weekend at this really fucking cool club, hanging out with Jim, um, and uh, I also got some beard oil this time, because <laughs> uh, Jim's wife runs uh, a store called uh, Five Natural Monkeys, and it is uh, all this like all natural products, you know, creams and uh, oils and things of that sort. So I got some beard oil, and I use it pretty regularly. Um, and and as you can see, my winter beard is starting to set in. It's starting to get a little thicker and bushier because uh, uh, I don't retain heat. So I got to, you know, kind of build build some cushioning around my face. Uh, and if Jim Bryan also has a very glorious beard as well. And uh, so I got some beard oil from them. Fantastic stuff. Real great, real great stuff. Uh, I highly recommend checking out Five Natural Monkeys if you're ever in that in that area. And uh, yeah, so that was kind of cool. that was really fun to do that. Uh, but I got to see Craig uh, kind of deviated there with the beard all the stuff. But I got to see Craig perform, um, and you know it, it's it's great. His material is really funny. He he's very honest, and uh, you know he talks about being a veteran and everything. Um, and and that's one of, one of the things that we kind of clicked on is talking about anti-war stuff. And, uh, that was really cool. Uh, so Church of Satire was, uh, both times that I was there, it it was, it was a blast. And, uh, the second time I was there, my birthday is very close to Halloween. So sometimes I have to deal with the fact that Halloween is a thing that I'm going to have to contend with. Uh, and I had to contend with (laughs) it. So uh, we, we, we had about uh, maybe 20 people per show. Uh, but but the, here's the thing is if we get 20 people and almost all the 20 people give a shit and they're into the show and they're willing to listen to something different, then that's great. Because I've done shows where it's 100 people and they all fucking hate it. So it doesn't matter how many people are there. It's it's about the it's about the quality of the audience, not the quantity of them. Sometimes, uh, and you know, one of the things Jim says is every time, um, every time that I come through, I make fans. Uh, we we had some people at the October show that came back to see me because they remembered me from my January show, uh, and in the January show, we had a couple people that came to see me at that weird show we did at the vape shop. So. 
it's really it, it was really cool to kind of hear a, a club owner say that because it's one of those things where I'm like yeah I want to you know having fans is, is important but it's also engaging with them and keeping in touch with them because I don't I don't want to be this unapproachable person that you know is just sort of on stage you know six or seven inches above everybody um, you know speaking this thing that uh, you know but I, I want to connect with people because I'm part of the people I'm I'm one in the same and uh, Jim kind of I think he's one of the venue owners that gets that he kind of understands that about what I'm trying to do and is willing to uh, take the risk and keep working with me which is which is fantastic because I will fucking go to that club anytime that they want me there <laughs> So uh, the next couple uh, of um, of shows that I have on here are my album recording shows. Uh, in January and February, I recorded my album Empathy on Sale, which is available for download and streaming wherever you want to download and stream albums from. Uh, you can also get it on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Um, so the first show that I did my album recording at uh, was Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, at, at the Scruffy City Hall. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous venue. It's a gorgeous venue. Um, we did, we took over their open mic is pretty much what we did. Uh, we took over the, uh, uh, Wednesday night open mic that they do at Scruffy City. Boston McCown runs that open door comedy and, uh, the the room was was set up really well uh it's it's a nice high stage there's a balcony area uh and we got a good bit of amount of people for uh, a donation based show um and it like i said it was sort of the first night of running the album um and honestly like when i got off stage i felt slightly rusty about my show if I'm being completely honest, I remember getting off stage and kind of feeling like some of the timing was off, some of the, um, y you know, like some of the, the the jokes didn't land the way that I wanted them to, uh, and part of that might have been on me, part of that might have been on, on, on the crowd and the way that the room was kind of set up, uh, but, but overall it was a really, really fun show. Uh, I, I had a great time with it, and unfortunately, that recording got a little mucked up because I messed up. I made a mistake. Uh, Boston set up all of the equipment, and on on my recorder, on my Zoom recorder that I have, uh, because by the way, I self record and self produce these albums, um, so I don't have like I don't have like a record company that I work with or anything. It's all DIY, self produced, self released. And there's a bunch of other comics that do that as well. Um, so. Uh, you know, I <laughs> I accidentally set the um, recording volume way too high, and there is there is just this static buzzing throughout the whole thing, uh, and I didn't realize that until the end of the evening. Uh, so that was kind of a bummer um, in, in that, but uh, but again, the show was really fun. Um, I got to see some people that I hadn't seen in a while. I got to hang out with Amanda Cruel, who I've uh, stayed with multiple times now in Knoxville and hung out with multiple times. And she's connected to the Bernie folks and uh, fantastic human being, fantastic person. Uh, Amanda's always super kind and very, uh, very understanding of like the comics lifestyle kind of thing. Um, she's also starting to do stand up now, which is very cool. Uh, which I, I got to see her when I when I went back there in November. Uh, but after that, I started uh, doing a couple shows with uh, True Grit Comedy, um, which is run by Beth Tompkins, and uh, they run great shows. I actually last in twenty eighteen did a show with them um, at the first days of Autumn Brewing Company. I think is the name of the space. But it was a first Friday show, um, and uh, she's expanded quite a bit from from there. Uh, she's running quite uh, quite a few shows. She's got a, a regular show in in Kingsport, Tennessee, uh, at uh, at the Gypsy Circus Cider Company, uh, which is a mouthful. But uh, she's got a lot of stuff going on. So I wanted to after I recorded the album, I wanted to do an album release, a couple of album release shows. 
Uh, and one of them I wanted to do in Knoxville. So I did that in June at the Birdhouse uh, with True Grit Comedy. And they incorporated music and live art and all this fun, exciting stuff. And we packed out the room. And unfortunately, the only thing that we had to contend with that night was a time limit. Um, we had to we had to start the show pretty darn early and end the show pretty darn early. So I only got to do about 20, 25 minutes of my new show, but we packed out that room. We got a bunch of really awesome people to come out and hang out with us. And uh, I got to meet some folks in the Indian community in Knoxville at that show, which was really rad. Uh, which has always been a struggle, uh, but like when Indian people find me, they kind of come out in, in a flock of Indian people, which is really neat. Um, but uh, it's it's sometimes is kind of tough to find the Indian communities in these cities. You know, uh, I never uh, really know where they're at or how to reach out to them, but they found my stuff somehow, and uh, they showed up. They hung out. Um, you know, they they wanted to invite me to other stuff. They took my business cards and everything. Um, so hopefully they'll, hopefully they'll be back. But here's what happened. And I do owe a lot to, uh, Amanda for, for helping me out with this. Um, my new album is a double disc album. Uh, so w the run that I got is basically it. After that, I'm only going to do download cards for this particular album, um, because doing a double disc is bananas expensive and uh, Empathy on Sale is 90 minutes. And I uh, so I ordered these albums and they took a while to get produced. So I sent them to Amanda's house and they were supposed to get there at the end of May and uh, and they did not. So as as things were proceeding, I had a backup where I was going to get these download cards and, you know, give those out to people instead at the album release show and download cards wouldn't be printed and shipped until the day the album came out which was the day of the album release show <laughs> i was like oh man like this is such a disaster so i had to like take people's addresses and stuff um and then send them out the albums once i once i had them in my hands and back in when I was back in Pittsburgh, right, uh, which which was a bummer. It was I, I like I didn't want that to to be the thing, right? I kind of wanted uh, um, I kind of wanted it to it to be a big event, and it was a big event. There was a lot going on that night, um, and it was and and Beth kind of put it all together very well. So I went back. So part of the reason I wanted to continue working with Beth is because how because she runs very good shows, and she's very professional about it, and she understands like what touring comics are looking to do and what type of show we can do and try to format the show uh, appropriately and she's always been very cool about the type of material that I do um, so uh, I, 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 I like working with Beth quite a bit um, so I went back in November uh, to do uh, another show at the Birdhouse uh, basically without the time restrictions that we had um, and we had a little bit of a smaller crowd. We, we put a lot more promotional effort into the November show. Um, like we, we did a lot of stuff into getting the word out, but I think there was just too many things going on in Knoxville at that time. Um, it seems like once you get closer to Thanksgiving, to possibly Tennessee, possibly the area of Knoxville itself, um, because of what Knoxville is, it's a little bit of a college town. It's a little bit of a blue collar town. It's a, it's that mix of the two kind of thing. Um, maybe mid November is not the best time to go uh, to to Knoxville. Maybe a little earlier in the month would, or maybe a little bit later. You know, past Thanksgiving, it, it hit that in between time um, of Thanksgiving and Christmas. You know, uh, that that weird limbo time of, of the holidays that people hit up into. Uh, they, it was a smaller crowd, but they were a mighty bunch. Uh, they were super into the show. Uh, people were very excited about hanging out after the show. Um, I had a, I had a good time. I saw Jay Kendrick for the first time in like months and months at that show. Uh, so I, I had a really great, great time. Um, it, you know, uh, small turnout or otherwise, it was still a really, really fun fucking time, uh, to, to be in Knoxville, to, to hang out with people over there and uh and and continue working with beth because she's awesome she does a she does a great job uh go go check out uh true great comedy shows 
if you're in the Knoxville area. Uh, and then uh, we're going to talk about Huntsville. That was the second album recording show back in January. Um, this was a house show produced by Clockwork Comedy. Uh, my good friend Patrick Cunningham helped set this up. Uh, super special album recording, and uh, I recorded it as a video, got it edited and everything like that, and I released it as like a YouTube comedy special, so it's available uh, to download via YouTube. Um, it's a private link that you can, you can get, um, and again, all of that stuff is available on my website if you would like to, uh, if you would like to purchase it there. So, um, yeah, I, I like doing house shows a whole bunch and uh this was at my uh at, i think we called it the tree house at one point i i'm not really i can't remember exactly what set this call in his house uh but it's a dope ass fucking space it's a dope ass fucking space uh and he sets up shows really really well there's lighting involved and like he has like professional sound equipment and stuff like it's fucking awesome um, it's one of the best produced house shows uh, that I have done uh, in my years of touring, uh, which is why in June I went back and did my album release show there, uh, pending the same problems that I had with the uh, with the Knoxville show with me not having the albums and having to take people's addresses. But but more than that, I think a bunch of people also were like, hey, if it's available on your website and on Spotify and all of that stuff, I will go check it out there. Uh, ASAP and uh, uh, you know so so I think people did that which is which is very cool um, but I got to flesh out the new material at that second show uh, back in June and uh, at the album release show and a lot of the stuff that I did for that for the first couple of months was um, I hadn't figured out really the 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 point the thesis of the show yet uh, and part of the thing of going to these house shows, though, is the the journey that people are willing to come with you on. When you do a house show that's intimate like that, right, and, and it is very intimate because people are sitting on these couches, they're sitting on the floor, you know, like they're congregating, it's all BYOB, everybody's specifically there to be there. Um, it's very cool. And... You know, people kind of get really pulled into the show. So the energy and the dynamic of, of doing a house show is different. And I love, and that's part of the thing of like running new material at these house shows. I, I think I get a little bit more out of it um, because of the way people are engaged uh, at house shows. So they're really paying attention. You know, like when, when a joke hits, it hits way bigger at house shows. Uh, when things get a little too intense, or if the if it doesn't hit the right way, you can kind of see people go, mm, almost feel like you almost hit the mark on that. Uh, so, I, I that that's part of the thing I really love about about doing house shows, is is exactly that. Um, and and sets house is always always fucking great. And and I got to fucking hang out with them finally too, like. Uh, I was in Huntsville for a few extra days and you know when you're on tour and you and you come through you're kind of breezing through the town you show up you do the gig you hang out that night you wake up the next day you pack up your shit and you got to go to the next town um when I get a chance to fucking sit down and be in a town for a little while and catch up with some people uh I really like that and and Seth's a really great guy so I got the fact that I got to hang out with him after the show and I got to hang out with him uh you know like the, a day the, the day or two that I was in town uh, spending time I I was very excited about that uh that was really really cool that was one of my favorite parts uh that's always one of my favorite parts of going on tour is is meeting these people meeting people meeting cool people and and fucking coming back and, and and seeing them and keeping in touch with them um so yeah thank you very much I, I i appreciate the hospitality seth uh so uh moving on to memphis tennessee another place that i recorded my album at high tone and uh unfortunately again this i wish i wish i had a better recording of this but something that we did not account for uh when we did the did the recording 
um, was the band playing in the big room. Because High Tone has two rooms. One room is the smaller room, which is where I was, the intimate space, um, with this fucking amazing mural behind me, right? It's like all these comic book characters and stuff. Like, it's fucking bananas amazing. Uh, and I was so excited about it. Like, I was so thrilled about it. Um, and they have a big room. I think that seats like a hundred or more people. Uh, and unfortunately, they had a band that night uh, that started about maybe 15 or 20 minutes into my set. So you can kind of hear it um, in the recording. And I tried to talk to a couple people about being like, what can I do to get rid of this noise? And everybody was just like, I don't know. Uh, because in order for me to do that, I would have to put a lot of work into it, and uh, that's very expensive. And I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to not pay people for helping me uh, audio engineer my album. Um, so that's kind of just sitting there, and it was, you know, it was such a fun show. It was such a great, fun fucking show uh, with Josh McLean and Katrina Coleman, um, and I got to see my friend Laurel. Laurel and I did improv in Pittsburgh for years, and, and then she moved, and uh, and I got to see her for the first time, and her husband. Like, it was fucking great. It was such a fun time. Mm. Josh McClain, by the way, um, runs a little kitchen in, in high tone, and he makes some fucking badass food all the time. He's always posting about his food, by the way. And every time he posts about his food, I'm just like, I want, I want it. I need to drive to Memphis right now. <laughs> Gotta get me some Josh McLean food. <laughs> so if you're go, if you're in Memphis, you gotta go to High Tone. You gotta check out a show, and you gotta get some food from from uh, uh, Josh McLean. Uh, and and a super big shout out to to my friend Katrina Coleman, uh, who is consistently been the reason why I come back and perform on super fucking awesome shows in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, Memphis is a weird little town with a bunch of amazing little weirdos, and I fucking love it, right? Like, every time I go to Memphis, I meet a new uh, incredible weirdo, and I'm like, I want you to fucking hang out with me all the time. Uh, and that's sort of the, that's sort of like the fucking special thing about Memphis. Um, and, and Katrina is the reason why uh, why I keep coming back there because she, she puts on awesome shows. She hooks me up with great venues and great people that want to fucking help me. And, and again, she's another person that kind of understands what touring is and how it works and, you know, what people that go on tour go through and what they're looking for. And, and professional, she's fucking professional, you know, she puts together professional shows. Uh, and so, so thank you to Katrina um, uh, I will be back in Memphis in March, uh, March 6th. I'm going to be doing a house show in Memphis with Katrina Coleman, uh, the, the, the godmother of Memphis comedy. I, uh, I, 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 I will, I will be bold enough to say that she's the goddamn godmother of, uh, of Memphis comedy. If it wasn't for Katrina Coleman, I think that you, you would just have to shut that city down. Like if Katrina leaves Memphis, just, you know, just shut the whole thing down and shut it all down. <laughs> No, they're great. They're amazing people in Memphis doing some really, really great stuff. Uh, but Katrina's consistently been the person that's always brought me into town um, and and put together really awesome shows. Uh, and and as 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 tradition continues, when I go to Memphis, uh, I end up hanging out with Katrina till like fucking four o'clock in the morning, either uh, either sitting in, in the living room or her backyard or her front porch, uh, and just bullshitting about comedy and the universe, uh, and gushing over how we like each other as people, and, uh, and how great everybody is, like, and it's a super fucking fun time, so, uh, Memphis continues to be one of my favorite fucking places to go to, and I'm very excited to come back, um, in March, uh, so stay tuned for, for updates about that, um, then we went to Fayetteville, Arkansas, uh, Fayetteville, I, I honestly, like, I was very concerned about going to Fayetteville the first time I did, and the first time I did was, like, October of 2016, I think, um, and I played this, like, weird little space, like a garage, I played a literal garage, <laughs> and we got, like, 30, 40 people on a Sunday night, 
Uh, and it was like a super fun show, right? So when I went back to Fayetteville in in uh, 2018, I went through twice. Um, I, I got to hang out with Stetson Banks, who, who hooked me up with Comedians NWA. Um, uh, they, they run some incredible shows at Nomads, um, and, um, I believe it's Black Apple Crossing. I'm going to be there in February, both those venues, um, uh, I'm very excited to come back, but I wanted to specifically record my album in Fayetteville because of the people that are there. The people that come out to see shows in Fayetteville are intelligent, they are, um, they are up for something different, they are up for something out of the box. And the venue that I performed at was Stage 18. And unfortunately, my album recording was the final show at Stage 18. Um, they shut down the venue, uh, unfortunately. And this venue was so fucking cool. It really, it was such a cool fucking venue. It's a great little listening room. Um, and uh, run by uh, great people, David Embry, and, uh, and the folks that run that. They have some great mixed drinks too, by the way. <laughs> they had some really great mixed drinks. Uh, but it's it's this very intimate, warm listening room. And, you know, the way the room is set up and the way that they, like, produce these shows with Comedians NWA, like, it really pulls everybody in. And again, it kind of creates that thing where, where it, it's very similar to the house shows where you are specifically coming to that venue to see the show that's at that venue, um, so so the so when when a joke hits, it hits bigger. When people are are really grasped into what you're saying, they're really into what you're saying, right? So, um, and again, like you get to engage with the crowd. You know, people came up and and hung out and chatted with me. And usually, when people don't do that, I I feel like I have failed as a comedian, where I'm like, I didn't, I didn't fucking connect with people. Like I didn't, I didn't make the effort to connect with people in the right way. Um, and every time that I've I've gone through Fayetteville, uh, I have gotten a chance to hang out with folks, talk to them, um, learn about what's going on in the area, and that's what I like. I like doing that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, I got to say, David Embry, uh, David, pretty much kind of gave me one of the best fucking quotes. Um, that I've ever received about my standup, uh, that I still use in some descriptions, uh, of, of my, of my standup because it's that fucking good. Uh, I'm going to try to pull it up on my phone. I should have, I should have had this ready to go. Uh, but I, but I missed the mark on it. Uh, but it is, it is such a great fucking quote. Um, God, I hope I can find it because I had it and then and then I might have uh, lost it. Damn it! It's on my website too. I know this is so. This is so kind of. This is kind of unprofessional of of me. As I'm talking about super professional things that people do, I'm doing like the least professional thing right now, which is uh, creating content and being on my phone as I fucking do it. Uh, I'll just look it up on the, on my website because I know that it's up on my website. Okay. Is it not up on my website? That's crazy that it's not up on my website. Holy crap, it's not up on the website. That's weird. Uh, but it's basically, he says that I'm dangerously perceptive. That's, that's, the, that's, that's the thing that he kind of pulled out of it is he called me dangerously perceptive. Uh, sorry about that weird little, little hiccup there. I thought it was going to be up on my website, but it wasn't. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, that, that's one of the best fucking quotes that I've ever received. I was just like, holy shit, that is, that is one of the coolest things anybody's ever fucking said or written about me, uh, and my stand up. Like, what a fucking cool thing. 
Um, so thank you, David. I, I thank you for, for having me at Stage 18. Thank you to Comedians NWA for hooking that up. If you want to listen to that recording, uh, that is available on my Bandcamp page. Um, so go to, uh, that's ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. So I released that recording. Um, that recording is the album of Empathy on Sale. Uh, and I released that recording on Bandcamp. We sold out the room, by the way. There was like 60 some odd people there, um, which is amazing, which is incredible. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, it's because it's, it's 60 some odd people that were there to see something different, that were there to, to, to talk about issues, to talk about interesting topics, to discuss ideas and be open-minded about it, right? To, 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 to be challenged through comedy because I, because the, the reality of it, of it for me too is when I do this sort of material, I am talking about issues and ideas that have challenged me personally, right? Like things that I've had to think about um, and, and push myself on to even sit there and say like, am I living this? Am I living the, the truth that I am trying to convey on stage? And if I'm not, the show ends up also being a reminder for me to live that truth, to live the way that, that I'm saying and thinking and challenged myself on, uh, to, to live that way. And, and I feel like Fayetteville is one of those cities that is like excited about something like that. Um, so that's why I love going back there. And that's why I'll be back there in February with Comedians NWA. Uh, very excited to continue working with them too. Stetson, hell of a guy. Uh, he was on my podcast. Uh, we did a two-parter with him. Um, so go check that out as well. Okay, so the next one is is the, the recording in my hometown. Uh, the one that I feel like if you listen to it on Spotify or Apple Music or anything, like that's the recording that you get. And it was recorded at the Fun House at Mr. Small's. Uh, where my friend Zach Funk also recorded his album, uh, Brains Are Weird. Go check that shit out, too. It's available on Bandcamp. Shout out to, to my boy, Zach Funk. Uh, and uh, the Fun House is a really cool venue. It's a rock club, uh, but it's, it's a rock club that's also set up kind of like a listening room. So the vibe and energy of the room is a little different than doing a house show or a traditional listening room, uh, which I feel like this phrase traditional listening room is weird. Uh, cause I feel like listening rooms by, by their virtue are <laughs> not traditional because they don't put traditional shit on their stage. Uh, but like, but, but you're, you know, like a listening room that's, that's, that's that calls itself a listening room. Uh, but it is a little bit different. There, there were seated, there was like a seated area, but there was a bunch of people. I think we had close to like 90 people in that room that night, uh, which is incredible. Um, I did, I got on, uh, uh, the, the local NPR station to promote that show. Um, and I, I love that room. Um, it's a really, really cool room. So, so I was very honored to, to, to be able to record my album in that room. Um, and Nick Bigatel helped us out. Uh, he, he recorded it. He mixed the album. Um, and, uh, the reason why the album sounds, uh, better than the previous albums is specifically because uh, uh, of of Nick. So I'm I'm excited to work with him again. Um, when I end up recording uh, uh, politely angry, which is gonna happen in March. Um, so I'm uh, I was excited to 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 continue working with him uh, throughout this process. He was super easy to work with. He came in. He fucking boom 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 set up the equipment. Um, recorded everything, was super open about the communication, sat down, point, you know, we, we cut up every little track the way that we did. Uh, and another shout out too to Don Strange, uh, who helped me with some audio engineering and, um, and some, uh, uh, tweaking, um, in, 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 in this process as well for the video, uh, video special that's available on YouTube and to Jack Sawyer, uh, from Huntsville, who edited and um, color corrected and put put the put the video special together, because uh, we did a we did like a two to three camera shoot with that. Um, so uh, Seth in Huntsville helped set up the cameras, and then uh, Jack uh, utilized it to um, edit the video and put it together. So I, I I had some help in making this album what it was, right? Not just working with really amazing producers and really amazing venues. Um, and people, but also like really amazing audio engineers and video engineers to, to put this together to kind of make it a big thing. I'm very proud of, of Empathy on Sale. Um, I, I, 
I, I really enjoy like the whole process of, of writing that special um, because it really came out of a response. The album is a response to how we reacted to the 2016 election. Um, but it doesn't talk about the 2016 election because because the the reaction that we had was to bigger things that I think people weren't really talking about. So, um, yeah, and part of the reason why it's as long as it is is because there's a lot to say because of that. So um, the opportunity that I got to do an album like that and to work with the venues that I got to work with and the people that I got to work with to to produce that album is, is a super big deal. And, um, you know, I'm... I'm lucky to have have gotten those opportunities and I'm lucky to continue getting those opportunities as well. Uh, working on this new show, uh, working on, on, on Politely Angry and finding new spaces to to record that album as well. So uh, at, at, as we talk about that, uh, one of the spaces that I will be recording my album uh, in 2020, in March of 2020, is uh, the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which I think I'm wearing. Yeah, I am wearing I am wearing the shirt that I received from them. Let me see if I can stand up without screwing anything up. Yeah, see, the Williamsport shirt there. Um, I got this at the Art House Projects. Uh, John, the owner, uh, gave me uh, the, the shirt. So uh, I, I wanted to record the album at the Art House Projects, record Politely Angry, in uh, coming up in March of 2020 um, at the Art House Projects because that's the first place that I ever performed the show. Um, back in March of this year, I uh, I came back from uh, my honeymoon and, and I hadn't performed comedy in about a month. I, I'd done one or two little, little sets here and there. Um, and I'd forgotten how to perform Empathy on Sale. And I basically said, well, fuck it. I got I to gotta get this new shit out there anyway. Uh, so that's what I did. I wrote a bunch of new stuff. And I went on that show. And I was pretty open with the audience. And I told them, like, hey, this is this is the deal here. Um, you know, I, um, I've, I've written this show. Uh, it's a very new show. It's very raw. Let's see where it goes. And that crowd was super engaged into going to see where that show was going to go. So there were some ups and downs, some pops here and there, but it was the first place that I performed that show at all. And and that was sort of the the launching point to, to building the show from where it was. And it's the first time that I've ever done that. It's the first time that I've completely like scrapped all of the material from the last show and just done all new material to write a new show. Um, so the process of writing this show was completely different from anything I've done in the past and, uh, art house projects and the comedy shop and Kevin Siebert were the people that gave me the opportunity to do that. Uh, and that's a big deal because I, that, that is, that is a chance that they have to take on me. Um, and they took it and, uh, and I think it worked out, <laughs> Um, cause they didn't have me back in September and we, and we did it, another show where it was, you know, after six months, where's the show been? Uh, how far has it gotten? Has it gotten any funnier? Let's hope so. Let's find out. And again, super awesome crowds too. Like very open-minded, very engaged crowds. Um, Kevin's doing a lot of great stuff at that space. He brings a lot of really cool comics, really great touring comedians through that space. Uh, Johnny Azari, a good friend of mine, has has worked with Kevin a bunch of times. Super funny dude. Mark Viola has been there a couple times too. Um, you know, uh, what you're going to see at these shows are not the super famous celebrity comics, but you're going to see true blue collar working class comedians that are doing something a little different, a little something off the beaten path. And I think that's so fucking important to have a space like that. Um, and I think you can't fit more than 50 people in there. And that show back in March, um, we fucking packed that room out. Like, like we were packed to the gills on that, on that show. Uh, which was really fucking cool to see. And then we got about 25, 30 people in, in September, which was also really cool to see. 
Um, so Williamsport has consistently been like one of these really cool towns that I think if I if if I just say oh I'm gonna go record my album in Williamsport most people would be like but why like Central Pennsylvania the fuck is wrong with you are you crazy right but it's like look how fucking cool those people are. <laughs> So, yeah, album recording, March 2020. Stay tuned. Tickets are available. Um, moving on to the Bardstown in Louisville. Uh, I think this venue might be closing as well. But that it's super fucking cool space. Doug, again, is another person that kind of took a chance on uh, my this kind of material and believes in the stuff that I'm saying. Super sweet guy. Um, and I, and every time I go to Louisville, I get to see one of my favorite people in the whole world, Bandy McKelvey, who is fucking crushing it. Uh, she was part of the 50 comedians to watch for on Thrillist. And, uh, I, uh, am always excited when she says yes to opening for me, which I'm like, at this point, you shouldn't fucking, you, you, you shouldn't open for me. Like you are, you have crossed, you've, be, you've hit the next level, um, uh, of being a comedian. Uh, but Mandy's super sweet, super funny, super hardworking. She's she's doing a bunch of fringe festivals this year, um, and uh, she and so I get to see her every time that I go to Louisville. Um, I get to see some some of my favorite people. Like Rolf comes to Louisville. We've kept in touch. He's get, he sent some articles and stuff for me um, that that kind of like helped me with forkful of noodles and and taboo table talk and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Again, it's another place where I get to engage with people. I get to talk to people. Um, Rolf does a show called the Louis, Louisville Proactivist Report. I've been on there a few times, and he's interviewed some some people that like you won't hear on mainstream media. So uh, go check him out. Uh, but the thing I love about the Bardstown, uh, and particularly the lounge downstairs, that's probably my favorite room, is that it's this super intimate it's a lounge and it's super intimate, low ceilings, brick wall in the background. Um, and it, I, it is one of those spaces that is very perfect for comedy. Um, so thank you to Doug, Doug for, for constantly having me at, uh, at the, at the old bards. Um, and then I want to give a shout out to Pittsburgh Fringe Festival because they've, they've helped me out quite a bit. And I got, again, Politely Angry, that was one of the first places that I performed Politely Angry and really started to like tighten the show and and figure out what the show was going to be. Um, three really fun shows. In 2018, I sold out two out of three shows. Um, I unfortunately didn't do that this year, but I did sell out one of my shows. The, the, the first show almost sold out. And the third show was a little bit of a lighter crowd, so I got to do a little bit of experimenting with, uh, with the show. And uh, so, but the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival is now in Garfield. It's moved from the north side over to Garfield, and uh, they're partnering with some really cool spaces, partnering with First Fridays, um, things of that sort. So it, it is it is a very very fun festival. If if you're a performer looking to do a fringe festival. Um, this is a good one to do. It's, it's, it's a very welcoming and open space where you get to really craft a show, um, uh, to an open-minded, energetic audience. So I highly recommend, um, looking into the Pittsburgh Fringe. I'll be doing it this year. I plan to do it this year in April. Uh, I'll probably be recording at these shows as well. I'll probably be recording Politely Angry at the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival as well. Um, so, uh, shout out to Shayla. Uh, she's the mastermind behind all things Pittsburgh Fringe. And she's helped us out a lot, actually. Whenever whenever I do a big show in town, um, Shayla will, will help us out with with, stu uh, with the Pittsburgh Fringe stuff. Like, she'll, she'll put it out to the Fringe people. And, uh, you know, I, I, the last show of this year, just very recently, was at the Glitterbox Theater, which is a super, super rad space. Um, and, uh, and Shayla helped us out movement for a people's party, which is this big, big no, wait, where's this? Yep, there it is. Big pen right here. This movement for a people's party. Um, and the Pittsburgh free thought community all kind of came together and, uh, and, and, you know, we're talking to people and, and kind of making it a bigger, bigger event type thing. 
Um, uh, and that was really cool to see. And, and I think it's one of those things where I would love to do more of that in the future. Um, and, and, you know, kind of build a community around the show, uh, and engaging people in conversation, um, about interesting ideas and stuff, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited to, to, to do the Pittsburgh Fringe again. Last year I was at Bantha T-Bar in their backspace in Bantha. And that's like a very small, intimate setting, which I think, again, is kind of perfect when I'm just figuring out a new show. Um, because it's not, it you know, it's it's not 200 people coming in. It's, it's 30 to 40 uh, of people where I'm like, these are my friends. You know, these are these are my friends. I, I like these people. Um, and I want them to come on this journey with me, and that's kind of what I got. What I got to do with the, with the Pittsburgh Fringe this year. Uh, moving on to uh, the the Night Shop in Bloomington, Illinois, got to perform there twice this year. Fucking great venue, by the way. Uh, Christopher runs an incredible space. I gushed about them on my podcast, uh, Taboo Table Talk, um, which you can you can listen to online. But I will gush about them some more. <laughs> I found them. I found them when I was trying to run Empathy on Sale before the St. Louis Fringe Festival, top to bottom. And he opened up his doors. We got a good amount of people on a Tuesday night in Bloomington, Illinois. Um, super great space. Super great staff. And every time I go there, everybody has nothing but good things to say about. The night shop and what they're trying to foster uh because they're trying to foster a space for something different in bloomington where you you can come and enjoy some you know different art forms that come through different types of music different types of uh comedy storytelling engage with uh, an audience uh when i was there in april the, it, it was a little bit of a ruckus show but i found out the reason why it was a little bit of a ruckus show is because the speakers on one side of the room were not turned on, um, which explains, uh, what happened, but it was still regardless, a, a very fun show. It was, it, you know, uh, again, one of the, one of the shows where I really got to tweak out a bunch of stuff and figure out whether, you know, I, what material I need to keep, what material I need to dump and how I should expand the show and turn it into something a little bit different. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 again, an engaged audience will help me do that. So the so my writing process really becomes kind of like a team effort between between the crowd and and myself and venues that are uh, open and willing to to do something a little bit different. Um, and I was back there at, earlier in December as well, and I mentioned this on my on my podcast is uh, after a really fucking amazing show, <laughs> and I got to meet tons of great people. And have really awesome conversations, you know, and uh, and and talk to these amazing people. Clay Foley, Clay Foley opened for me on these shows, and he fucking rocked the house. Uh, Clay is incredible. You should go check out Clay if he's coming to your town. Um, I go outside and my car's fucking gone because where I parked uh on on the main drag of downtown bloomington illinois there are these signs and there's like three or four different you know versions of these signs and each sign like contradicts the previous one so it was super confusing but at 10 p.m they turned it into a cab stand uh and because they turned it into a cab stand my car got towed and i ended up having to walk like a mile to the police station to sign a release form pay ten dollars to get that car released um, and the officer that was there was very nice. So he was a super cool dude. And he was like, yeah, this is the situation. I'm really sorry that you're in it, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you know, I'm not sure how much it's going to cost you. I haven't been, um, you know, I, I left the force for 10 years and then I came back to do like some desk duty stuff. Um, so I'm not sure what it's going to cost you. Well, it cost me 200 bucks. That's what it cost me to get out, uh, of the tow yard, which sucks. Uh, which around the holidays is not a fun amount to lose. Uh, losing money, period, is not fun to do, right? Like, no one, no one's like, oh, man, can't wait. Oh, really trying to lose all that cash. Like, uh, but 
to to lose that much money at the end of the year when time things are already tighter and and tougher uh because of the holidays being what they are uh was was a real kick in the pants uh real just drive like a steel toe boot to the dick like that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of what it was and i tried to negotiate with them right like i'm sitting there outside it's like one o'clock in the morning i'm just like is there anything we could do i'm a touring performer i don't make a lot of money this is like a big deal uh and it was basically like what i made that night um and and then some i think it was it was it was actually more than what i made that night um was you know so i lost a little bit more money than i anticipated um and that sucked uh so but regardless of that though the show was really really fun um the venue was really 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 fun i had jackfruit nachos holy fucking shit were they amazing they were incredible some of the, I, like I I don't know how he made them, but they were they that might have been the best nachos I've ever had in my life. If I'm being completely honest, I think that might have been the best fucking nachos I've ever had in my life. Uh, that's how good those fucking nachos were. Hot damn! So night shop, uh, go keep going there. Support support these venues because it's very important to support venues that are supporting communities and bringing in cool shit for you to do uh in in these cities uh and then i uh, i want to talk about minneapolis because minneapolis is is starting to become one of my favorite cities even when it's fucking cold as balls out <laughs> uh when i was there in april it was it was it wasn't cold I, I i do remember because i opened the show with with an avengers endgame joke uh, because it was the weekend that that movie was opening, and I think we ended up with like forty fucking people in that venue, which was um, which was fucking amazing that we ended up with that many people there. Um, and where I performed was the Club Underground at the Spring Street Tra- Spring Street Tavern. Club Underground at the Spring Street Tavern. Um, very uh, like it is what it sounds like. It is an underground venue, right? It's below the stairs low ceilings uh very intimate space uh josh uh fantastic guy and guy the the sound guy uh guy the sound guy uh uh also very great super cool to hang out with them very professional crew uh and then they will they will give you some drinks uh every time i go there i'm just like okay we got it oh well there's another drink in my hand somehow i don't understand how this happened uh but but here it is uh so uh josh is a great dude man i i i really enjoy coming back to to club underground uh it's it's such a fun space to be at and and it's such a welcoming space to be at too um so i i really like it there uh and in april uh i did a 90 minute version of politely angry (laughs) And I didn't even realize I was going for that long. I got off stage and I was like, "Holy shit, it's ninety minutes of recording!" What the fuck? Uh, but the but the crowd fucking stayed through. They like stayed with it. They were engaged throughout the whole thing. There is a bunch of stuff that I did on that show that uh, I'm I've either backburnered at this point or will never do again. I'm not really sure. I haven't completely decided about that yet. But they but that crowd was. Holy shit, they were fucking in it, you know? Like, they stayed true, and they they stayed with me through the entirety of the thing. And when I got off stage, and it was 90 minutes, it was just like, what the holy shit, you guys. Like, you guys were fucking awesome to stick with me for all this time. Um, and when I went back in December, I did, you know, I did did the show the, the, the way that it is now with, with all of the edits taken out. So the, there's a large chunk that I'm kind of backburnering um and i got to see some people that i hadn't seen in quite some time uh i got to see my friend audrey that i hadn't seen in 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 a little while um you know uh sarah and emma and everybody in 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 april i had uh my friend sentel and uh mj marsh open up the show and sentel now lives in los angeles and mj is doing theater stuff so i had a tom chiltrum open up for me in uh in december and here's the thing 
with Minneapolis is that it is a fucking breeding ground for incredible comedians. Like, all of these com- like I can't... Every comic that I've met in, in Minneapolis is stellar. Just absolutely stellar. Um, and after my show in December, they had uh, the, a, a, a comedy showcase called The Greatest Comedy Show in Town, I think is what it's called. Um, and even the comics that were on there were, like, top-notch, right? Like, everybody was just crushing it all the way through uh so if you're in minneapolis do yourself a favor and go check out a local comedy show like go check out one of these underground shows because you're going to see something cool interesting and different um so yeah do that do it because you won't be disappointed um, and Club Underground is a fantastic venue to do it. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm already thinking about when I'm going to come back to Minneapolis because I, I'm 100% going to come back to Minneapolis at some point. <laughs> like, I feel like if I skip Minneapolis for 2020, I am doing uh, myself a disservice uh, because it's such a cool fucking town um, and, uh, and the crowds there are, are amazing. Uh, and again, it's another place where after the shows, everybody hangs out, uh, we have a couple drinks, we bullshit about uh, deep, weird, political, philosophical shit, and that's that's my jam. That's my thing. I love doing that with people. Um, so, uh, we, and then uh, and then I did open for Lee, and Lee Camp. Um, I opened for Lee Camp quite a bit, uh, and that show was incredible too, uh, at Mortimer's. Uh, at, at Mort's, as they call it. Uh, Mortimer's, we did that show. Uh, very, very cool space. Very, very cool space. It's a bar and restaurant up front, and there's a venue in the back um, with with an incredible stage. And again, like this really warm room um, uh, that, uh, you know, everything, like it, it feels very much like a listening room. Um, has that listening room rock club vibe to it. And I love working with Lee. I have a really good time working with him, and, and his fans are uh, incredible people at, And every time that I meet them. Uh, and some of them come back to see me. Like, some of them came back to see me in December uh, when I went back there. Uh, and that was really neat to kind of see, you know, uh, to see people that had seen me open for Lee to come see me do a bigger thing. Um, that's always a good feeling. That always feels real cool. Um so I got, and then I got to open for Lee again in Chicago back in May. Uh, I got to do two shows with him and at the Beat Kitchen. Um, and Chicago's, it's been an up and down city for me personally. Uh, I've had a lot of great shows in Chicago, but I've also had a bunch of duds in Chicago where I'm just like, oh man, like what the fuck did I do wrong? Like, how did I not get people to come out to see me here? Um, but when I've opened for Lee, I've opened for Lee there uh, three, four years in a row now. Uh, they're always so fucking cool. Like, the fans there, like, they're just, it's just good times uh, opening for Lee. And uh, we've had people, like, come to see us for, but like, we did two shows in Chicago. And we, and we had some people, like, come to both shows to come see us. And I'm, you know, so that was... That was really, really cool. Mel, uh, Mel is one of the people that came to see us uh, for both shows. And he's like, I'm bringing different people to d- both shows. And I was like, you're fucking adorable, man. You know, he's he's like the first show. He's there like fucking just rocking a Tulsi Gabbard t-shirt. And I was like, fuck yeah, Mel. Fuck yeah, dude. That's what I like to see, bro. Like you're just unabashed about who you are. And not only that, but he's like a super fucking positive dude, right? Like... He, you know, uh, he, he's like, oh, your throat's hurting. I'll, I'm going to get you these special lozenges. Uh, and then he like brings the lozenges the next day. He's fucking awesome. He was, he's such a great guy. I fucking love that dude. Um, so he's come to see the show like, you know, uh, so many times and he, he just enjoys it. And, and I love meeting people like that. I love meeting people like that. Uh, Okay, so I want to talk about Wonder Kamer Company in Fort Wayne, Indiana, um, because in early 2019, I was going to be there, and then uh, I exploded my throat. <laughs> I blew up my vocal cords. <laughs> because I did a 90-minute show, and then I would go and hang out with everybody, and then it was also the winter time, 
and uh, I uh, made the mistake of uh, my throat was going. And usually when I do that, I will get a bunch of tea or I will drink a hot toddy so that, you know, the alcohol will numb my throat and then the lemon and the honey and everything will soothe the rest of my throat. That's usually uh, what works for me in those sort of situations because I've been on tour uh, totally fucking sick and it's awful. So, but I, I, I would drink like a bunch of hot toddies. And I think at one, one place they made me this like crazy cinnamon spiced alcohol, which is just pure alcohol. Uh, and I, you know, it's like too much. So, um, I blew my voice out and I had to reschedule the show and I rescheduled the show for, for May uh, right before Memorial Day. And even right before Memorial Day, like, we ended up with a pretty darn good crowd in Fort Wayne. Uh, and shout out to my friend, uh, Brian Johnson, who lives in Fort Wayne and has, uh, put me up there, uh, and my friend Jordan, uh, and, uh, the good people at OK Comedy that, uh, continuously book me in Fort Wayne. That's, uh, and, and put something different on their stage, uh, usually at Wonderkamer. Um, big fan of that space. It's an art space, uh, so they always have some cool shit going on there, cool shit on the walls. They do a bunch of different things like galleries, and they work with um, students and uh, help, help students figure out the value of their art. They're doing a peace mural, uh, which, uh, when, when, do you, when do you see that shit? right? Like, when was the last time somebody was like, you know, I'm going to do a peace mural. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's really something that's done all that much. So, uh, shout out to Dan, shout out to, uh, all the people in Fort Wayne. Um, when I went there again in in November for black, for a black Friday show. And, uh, we, we did even better in, in November in terms of turnout, in terms of the crowd, in terms of the energy that they put out there. So again, Fort Wayne is starting to become one of these places where I'm like, yeah, fucking great. Yes, I don't know what the fuck I did, but I did something right. And I found the people that uh, are are excited to see this weirdo fucking show uh, that I'm putting out there. So and, and I'm super, super appreciative of the people that come out to these shows and that have continued to support these shows and can and go and keep supporting them. Right. Like go see more OK comedy shows because uh, they're OK. They're great. They're uh, okay. Comedy. Uh, Gordon is is doing a killer job of producing really cool shows in Fort Wayne. So keep supporting them. Um, I will one. I will definitely be back through Fort Wayne. Definitely be back through Fort Wayne. Um, in the in the uh, near future. Okay, we got two more for 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 part one. Um, I got I got to do four shows for the Atlanta Fringe when I was down there, and uh, all. F- I, got, I was surprised by some of them because the the one show that I thought was going to be the problem uh, was my late night show because I had like a late show, uh, like at 9.30 or something like that. And I was like, man, that's like, no one's going to come. And that was the packed out one. Like that, that show got packed out super quick. Um, and then I had this like sweet spot on a Sunday. And that was the one that was kind of like tougher to get through. Um, but I love doing these fringe shows. I really do. And there's one bit that I did in this fringe show about the amygdala that I think I need, I might have to bring back. I'm not sure. Um, because it does kind of fit into the, fit into the stuff that I'm talking about, but, uh, unless I can tighten up major portions of this show, I think it'll it'll make the show too long and too convoluted, and it might end up seeming like the amygdala piece is an is an outlier. So if you came to see my fringe shows, you heard me talk about the amygdala and doing a bit about that, um, and and this, and how it's connected to the to the idea of competition in our society, right? To to run an economic system specifically through competing with each other, um, but th- that's part of the reason why I love fringes is because I get to work stuff like that out, is I get to talk about, I got to, I, you, like, if I went to a comedy club 
like a traditional comedy club, like an improv or a funny bone or what have you, and did a joke about the amygdala, I would get fired. (laughs) Like, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the thing that happened at a couple of these comedy clubs, right? Like when I started talking about issues a lot more, and even when I would kind of be lighter about talking about issues as a host or a feature at these comedy clubs, like they would basically say, hey, go back to doing the accent because that's goofier and more fun and nobody wants to think here. And that's fair, right? Like that might not be what people are there to do. And that's totally cool, right? If you're, if you're up for a night where you don't have to think or be challenged or, or, or address some, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, fringy idea, um, then yeah, I think the comedy club is the right place to go for that. But if you're into something a little bit different, if you're into coming to see a show that's going to, uh, that's going to challenge the way that you think and challenge the way that you look at the world, um, Go, go see these fringes. Go to some of these DIY spaces. And what's even cooler about the fringe is most of them end up building a community. Um, most of them end up building a community. Like I end up partnering with the fringes in a variety of different cities because I've been a part of them. And then I come back and uh, do the Atlanta fringe again. This year, though, I am uncertain about it. Well, first of all, it's a lottery, so I might not even get in. But there are some dates that might conflict with the Atlanta Fringe. Um, So it's a toss-up. But here's the cool thing about it. Like I said, I partner with these fringes a lot. So when I came back to Atlanta in November, I partnered with Atlanta Fringe Festival. And um, I, uh, I got to do Mother Bar. Mother Bar and Kitchen uh and which is a super rad space we got like 30 some odd people at that at that space really packed it out um and it was it was partly you know a a lot of it had to do with the fact that like the atlanta fringe festival helped promote the the show um the atlanta fringe festival uh helped get the word out there to the people that has come to see me before and to say hey come see the show it's got more new material it you know it's sort of uh, the, the culmination of what you saw in June. Uh, and it was also, uh, the day of the democratic debates. (laughs) I have done a show this year on, on the day of almost every single democratic debate, right? I didn't do one on December 19th, uh, which I think is the most recent one. I didn't even fucking watch that one, but I did one on the fourth Democratic debates. I did one for the th- on the third <laughs> Democratic debates. I did one the night of the first fucking Democratic debates. <laughs> and what's interesting is, like, the turnouts were pretty okay. <laughs> I think most people kind of are just like, I'll catch it on fucking YouTube. I don't need to see this shit show. I'd rather go see some uh, nobody comic talk about some weird issues on stage. Uh... So I was I was very happy with the turnout. I was very happy with the show. Um, Mother Bar and Kitchen is a super rad venue, and I I hope that the Atlanta Fringe will continue to to work with me because I I would love to continue working with them. Um, and again, another another kind of really cool thing about it is this sense of community that forms around um, around these shows because of stuff like this. Um, so. Um, you know, everybody talks afterwards, everybody bullshits, we all share ideas, we all share our thoughts. Uh, and that's, I really enjoy that aspect of, of the shows. And, and you do that a lot at the fringes, like after the shows, we all go to the bar and hang out and talk and meet the audience members and things of that sort. So um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy that aspect of it. So that's one of the big, big reasons I like the fringe is there is a large community, uh, community based aspect that surrounds the, uh, that surrounds the culture of the fringe. Um, so onwards to the complete opposite portion of, of the city to round out the first part of, uh, this, this retro, uh, the, the, the tour retrospective of 2019, uh, is Boston, Massachusetts, uh, 730 Tavern in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm gonna be back there again in January, uh, January 29th with Anderson Comedy. Uh, Rob Crean, uh, super, super fucking funny guy. I I, I think he's very underrated. Um, 
he did my podcast. We talked about a bunch of different things uh, on that podcast. Very intelligent person. Um, I, and I really enjoy hanging out with Rob. Rob's one of those people that you can have a very genuine conversation with and then, and then like it'll veer into just you doing bits for a bit and then you come back in and have a real genuine conversation with him again. Um, I like hanging out with Rob a lot. I met Rob when I first opened for Lee back in, I think like 2013 or 2014. Um, and, uh, and, um, we did a show at the gas and uh and i've just kind of kept in touch with him the whole time and he has been very cool about helping me out and and setting up shows like like the one at, at 7 30 tavern um a very cool space it's the back room of 7 30 tavern and the the for the way he sets it up when you kind of look at it you're like this shouldn't work but it super does right like you're kind of it he kind of sets it up so that the room is horizontal, but it's not very deep horizontally. So you're in the center and you, but you can see everything on both sides where like, it's not so wide that if you're sitting in one corner, you, you can't really connect with that, that side of the room. Um, so the way Rob sets up that room and the way that he, he formats the show, uh, is really quite ingenious and and makes a room that you don't think is going to work for comedy work really fucking well for comedy. Um, and Anderson Comedy does a bunch of great stuff. They do every Friday at uh, at the Great Scott, uh, the Gas at the Great Scott. Uh, they do shows at the Seven Thirty Tavern, um, and they produce shows all across uh, all across the Boston area. So go check out Anderson Comedy. They do but they do some videos and stuff like that too. Like Rob puts out some really funny videos uh, that I, that I always enjoy. Um, so highly recommend it. Um, I got to see my good friend, Zach Kennedy while I was there. Uh, I haven't seen Zach in quite some time. Uh, met him in Columbia, South Carolina and, uh, basically have had him open, uh, open for me every single time that I went through Columbia. And I wanted to, when I found out he was in Boston, I wanted to make sure that I could add him to the show and, um, and, you know, like, uh, and to see, like Zach's come a, a really long way from when I met him back in like 2013 or something like that. Uh, to to to, so to kind of see that growth in a comic and in a, in, a, in a friend is, uh, it just warms your heart. Uh, and then I proceeded to hang out with him and, and uh, drink a bunch, <laughs> which is kind of what happens, right? Like when you see an old friend, you're like, let's dr drink forever. <laughs> Uh, and then I woke up the next day and I was like, oh, I am very 30. I am, I am incredibly 30. <laughs> like I'm 31 and I, if I like have a little bit too much to drink, it's just like, are my eyes supposed to hurt this much? <laughs> is, is all of the weight of my body on my eyelids? <laughs> like that's kind of what it fucking felt like. Uh, but it was great, man. It was so good to see Zach. It was so good to hang out with Rob uh, the couple days that I was in Boston. Um, and I'm looking forward to coming back through uh, and hanging out with some folks uh, again in uh, in January. Um, I will say I had a weird heckler um, at that show that um, that threw me for a bit of a loop, but also helped me like better one of one of my pieces, which I thought, which, which again is like, that's sort of the way things work, right? So sometimes you get a weird heckler that's like, what about this idea? And it's just like, oh shit, I didn't think about that idea. Uh, but thank you for pointing that out to me. And, uh, and it was cool. It was cool that they did that. They kind of challenged me on it. And, uh, by challenging me on it, um, I got to make a bit better. I got to talk about something that I think is interesting and doesn't really get talked about a whole lot. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciated that heckler. Uh, so, uh, anyway, I think we're going to wrap up part one here. Uh, this video is already quite long as it is. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like, give it a share. Uh, tell some peeps about it. Tell some friends about it. Come see me live. Uh, I, I might end up uh, talking about you in a future video. I don't know. Maybe that'll happen. Uh, like I said, I have, a, I have a bunch of shows coming up in 2020. 
Uh, but my tour starts in, uh, in down south in January, January 3rd. I'm going to be at the venue on the 35th in Norfolk, Virginia, January 4th at the Comedy Closet in Columbia, South Carolina, January 5th at the station in Carborough, North Carolina, January 17th. I'm going to be at Caffeine Underground in Brooklyn, New York, January 24th. I will be at La Costaneda. Uh, with Lank Out Loud Comedy in Lancaster, PA. Uh, and on January 25th, I will be at uh, the Ruba Club opening for Lee Camp in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. January 29th, Boston, Massachusetts. Come hang out with me at the 730 Tavern. Uh, and January 31st at the Apohadian Theater in Portland, Maine. So if you're in those cities, uh, go to my website, grab your tickets, and we'll see if these shows and my entire tour schedule is available at ramennoodlescomedy.com. It's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, you can also become a patron uh, over at patreon.com uh, and help uh, support more DIY stand-up comedy, uh, not just touring, but also uh, content like this. Um, uh, content like my show, uh, Forkful of Noodles, which talks about a lot of sociopolitical um Sociopolitical topics, uh, we do a deep dive on one particular issue um, and, and try, try to see how they're connected to other things. Uh, my, my other show, The Dispatch, which is uh, a little bit more current events related, um, Road Reflections, which is this, uh, where I talk about, you know, news stories in, in a little bit more loose fashion and taboo table talk, uh, which is my interview podcast. So uh, go to patreon.com slash Trish Mohan Haha. Every little bit helps. Um there's going to be some other ways that you can also donate that I'm going to be working on uh, and working on getting out there as well. So uh, thank you guys so much and uh, we'll see you on the road.